Amen, amen, amen. We bless the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God because he has been faithful and it is by his grace that we are gathered here once again this afternoon. I would just like to extend a warm welcome to all of you gathered here. You have been faithful in coming since Sunday until now. And I know the Lord will reward your faithfulness. Welcome to anyone who is here for the first time since we, and I don't think there is, I've seen all the faces. Oh yes, Sister Elsie. All right, so welcome to all of you. And of course, we welcome our viewing friends online and we wish for you a blessed evening as we immerse ourselves in the word, the music that we will be participating in today. Of course, we have been following the theme, Lest We Forget. And for today, it is Lest We Forget, Betrayal is Real. Please join with me in the gathering sentences which come to us from Psalm 25, from verse 1 to verse 7. And it reads thus, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul, O oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth. And teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses, for they have ever been of old. Verse 7, 
Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Amen. We continue as we gather together in praise, led by our praise team, and we will have the songs of praise. of the Lord and so I would just invite you to stand so we can lift his name on high he is the king of kings and the lords of lords and as the songwriter said magnify the Lord with me we are going to magnify his name this evening so let us give him all the praise and all the glory and all the honor that is due unto his name hallelujah just Give him a praise offering for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just wave your hand and praise him. Hallelujah. We're glad to be in his presence. In his presence there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Our first song, I feel like pressing. So we are going to press on this evening. Okay? I feel like pressing, I feel like pressing, I feel like pressing my way. I'm on my way to glory, and I feel like pressing my way. Oh, I feel like pressing, I feel like pressing, I feel like pressing my way. I'm on my way to glory, and I feel like pressing my way. I feel like pressing my way I'm on my way to glory And I feel like pressing my way I know I'm pressing, I know I'm pressing I know I'm pressing my way I'm on my way to glory And I know I'm pressing my way I know I'm pressing I'm pressing my way. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we must, we have to flee. Oh, when we stand in the name of Jesus, tell me who can stand before us. When we stand in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name we have the victory in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus the demons we have to flee oh when we stand in the name of Jesus tell me who can stand before us when we stand in the name of Jesus we have the victory In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Come on, do you believe that tonight? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the man will have to be. Oh, when we stand oh, in the name of Jesus, we stand in the name of Jesus. Tell me who can stand before us. When we stand in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. continue this journey we are determined to hold on to the end yes. I am determined to hold on
coming close to you, Lord. Never let me go. To the faint hearted, he's there to lift you up out of the miry clay. He is there to lift you up out of your sorrows and your pain. He's there to draw us closer to him. 
Let us go to God now with our prayers of adoration, thanksgiving, and confession. Let us pray. Mighty God, we adore you and we lift you up this evening. We gather, Lord, in your presence today because you are the God who created us to worship you. We thank you, Lord, that you made us in your own image and likeness. And Lord, you deserve all honor and glory, all the praises of our lips tonight. And so, Lord, we just pray that indeed your presence will be felt among us this evening and even as we leave this place tonight. Holy Spirit, we lift you up. You are our guide. You are our protector and our shield. We thank you for the comfort that you give us, Lord. When we are down, when we are out, when we are battered and bruised, we thank you that you have never left our side, even when we may feel that you have. But Lord, you are always there. You are always there, Lord, with your still, small voice. So help us, O oh God, to spend time in meditation, listening to you, listening for the answer, because you always send an answer. Father God, we glorify you as King of kings and Lord of lords. You who created the universe, none other there is like you, O oh God. There is none like you. Father God, we confess our sins to you. We confess that we have not been the people that you have called us to be. We acknowledge our transgressions because they are ever before us. And you see them and you know them. So we cannot hide from you, Lord. So we ask you even now to cleanse our lips our hearts and our minds to cleanse our bodies as we present them to you as living sacrifices. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will hear our collective prayers tonight for this church, for this, this community, this country, and this world. Forgive us our sins and lead us into the way everlasting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The assurance of pardon is taken from St. John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Let us sing together the hymn, O love, how deep, how broad, how high, beyond all thoughts and fantasy, that God, the Son of God, should take our mortal form for mortal's sake. Oh, 
Listen to the evening psalm, which comes to us from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing. Yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidst, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servants away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not. Neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The word of the Lord. And we continue with our hymns. But you may be seated during this one as we sing the hymn, Power of Your Love.
turn to our scripture readings. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Isaiah 50, reading from verse 4 to 9, and it will be read by Sister Norma Campbell. The New Testament lesson is St. John 13, reading from verse 21 to 32, and it will be read by Brother Nikoi Sylvester. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Isaiah 50, verse 4 to verse 9. The Lord God, the Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with the word. 
him that is weary. Morning by morning he wakens, he wakens my ear, to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to the smackers, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been confounded. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Good evening, church. New Testament lesson is taken from St. John 13, reading from 21 through 32. When Jesus had thus spoken, he was troubled in spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was lying close to the breast of Jesus. So Simon Peter beckoned to him and said, Tell us who it is of whom he speaks. So lying thus, close to the breast of Jesus, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I shall give this morsel when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Jesus, the son of Simeon, Iscariot. Then after the, the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What are you going to do? Do quickly. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money box, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and in him God is glorified. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify in him, in himself, and glorify at him at once. This is a portion of God's holy word. Let's speak to God. Amen. And at this time, we invite Elder Dr. Delroy Frey, who will present the word to us from the Lord. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. It is indeed a pleasure to be here again. Be in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Mighty God, even as we come this evening, Lord, we invite you to just have an act with us. Anoint us, mighty God and to teach us in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our topic this evening is a very interesting one. And I'm going to be honest with you, as I tried to prepare this topic, I realized the depth of this topic. Let's we forget betrayal is real. And I want to take you into a little academics. 
Just a little bit. And if I were to ask you, what is the definition of betrayal? I'm sure all of us would have different idea of what it's been. But if you take the dictionary definition, it says several. Violation of a person's trust or confidence. Or to do something bad or hurtful to someone. To be disloyal. And the big example of being disloyal in a sense is cheating on your spouse. And if we look at some of the synonyms that are words that are similar to the word betrayal, we'll come up with words like deception, dishonesty, sell out, if you want to take it down low, treachery. Treason, double crossing, double dealing, duplicity. And all these words are similar in one way or the other to the word betrayal. And from the New Testament passage that was read. As I was preparing this and I read the passage, I had to pause for a moment. And you know why I had to pause for a moment? There was Jesus there. He was with the men who he worked with for the past three years. These were men who he trusted. And these men trusted him. Why? Because they have seen his works over the years. They have seen the wonderful miracles that were done by Christ. And here is Christ. As they are about to partake of his Passover. He says, what are you here? You are going to betray me. Now, if you are in that group and you know that you love Jesus a lot, what would be the first thing that comes to your mind? I wonder, and it came out in the passage, I would want to know who it is. So the question was asked, who is it? And the Lord, in all his wisdom, he says, watch. The one who I'm going to give, dip the bread and give it to him, that's the one. But I don't know if you realize from the text that I didn't, uh, I'm not so sure that the other disciples realize because immediately, the Lord gave it to Judas. And then he whispered something. And the text went on to say that probably they thought that Jesus was telling him to go and do something in preparation for the Passover. So in a clandestine way, the person who was going to betray him came to the fore. But I'm not sure they understood who that person was. Judas Iscariot was one of the 12 apostles. He's notorious for betraying Jesus by disclosing Jesus' whereabouts for 30 pieces of silver. And I want you to follow me through this, 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 this discussion. Judas brought men to arrest Jesus. And identify him with a kiss. I want you to ponder that a bit. Identify him with a kiss. No, Judas was one of the closest disciples. Even one of Jesus' 12 disciples 
who was privileged to be part of Jesus' ministry here on earth. The question is, what led Judas to betray his Lord and Savior? What led him to do so? How could one who had been with Jesus, seen his miracles, heard his teachings, betray him with a kiss? You know, I thought about that. And I said to myself, probably if I were in his position, I probably would sneakingly go and touch him or point him out. But look what he did, did. He betrayed him with a kiss. What does a kiss represent? Betrayal is real, real, my brothers and sisters. And I believe when I started, you know, looking into this, I thought, I said to myself, I wonder about myself as an individual as it relates to betrayal. Because oftentimes it looks so nice on the surface. But what is happening deep inside of us? What about us? Who claim to be Jesus' disciples? Today, question, could we be guilty of betraying Jesus in some way? Before you say, no way, let us see further into this. Are there things that misled Judas that could have a similar effect on us? Let us pause for a moment and think about that. What might be learned from the betrayal of Jesus? Least we follow the same part of Judas? Let's reflect for a few moments. Jesus was betrayed by a close friend. Judas was no stranger to Jesus. As mentioned before, he was one of the apostles. He was among those whom Jesus loved. As prophesied in Psalm 41 verse 9, Jesus was betrayed by his Owed a familiar friend. This was predicted long ago. Being close to Jesus is no guarantee that we might not betray him. Just being his disciples is no reassurance assurance we could not betray him. Like others in the church at Asia Minor in Revelation 2, we could leave our first love. We have to be careful. We can leave our first love. We start to begin to tolerate false doctrine. And you know it just creep up on you without even you knowing about it. Permit false teachers to spread their doctrines can easily creep up on you. Fail to be watchful to become lukewarm. You don't want that. We can betray Jesus by denying him. Second Peter 2 verse 1. Jesus was betrayed by a lover of money. Money was a problem for Judas. In fact, he often pilfered from the money, pilfered from the money bag. 
to put it mildly, my brothers and sisters. He was a thief. But I know some scholar might jump at me and say, but Dr. Free, don't, didn't Jesus recognize who he was? And I'll quick to say, of course he knew. He knew he, who, he, who he was. The opportunity to make money led him to portray Jesus. Matthew 26, verses 14 to 16. My brothers and sisters, none of us are immune to that type of betrayal. We have to be careful. We have to be steadfast in our approach. Absolutely important. You know, the devil is subtle in his approach. He'll tell you a little thing and it appears as if it's nothing. And then it just creeps. And in no time, it reaches a crescendo. And often time you see people and you say, how do you get in this? And they say, look, we didn't realize what was happening. And you'll say to yourself, how can that be? It's true. If you're not careful. Money can be a problem for us. The deceitfulness of riches can render us unfaithful. Matthew 13, verse 22. Jesus' admonition in Revelation 2, verse 10 says, Be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. I'll repeat that. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. My brothers and sisters, could we be guilty of betraying Jesus by our desire for riches? Letting such things take precedence over our service to God and His church. And on the surface, we'll jump and say, no, it can't happen. But I believe this evening, this topic is going to put us on alertness as it relates to betrayal. Judas was betrayed by a show of affection. Now, when you see affection, you're not going to think that there is something negative about that. Watch that. Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss. He could have simply pointed him out. Jesus noted the obvious contradiction in Luke 22 verse 48 when he said, Judas betrays thou the son of man with a kiss. He knew that it was the point of betrayal. So he challenged him. This play of affection don't ensure faithfulness. I want you to remember that. Doesn't necessarily. Many people are very emotional in their relating to the Lord. Example in worship. You see people worship and worship and worship. And you can look at it and you can say this is true worship. Believe in it to be evidence of being spirit filled. 
Emotions alone are not reliable guide. They are important for we for we are to love God with all our heart and with all our minds. Matthew 22 verse 27, 37. Emotion must come from faith. Not faith coming from emotion. Otherwise, we are led by emotionalism, not faith. True faith comes from the word of God. Romans 10.17 Don't get me wrong, you know. I'm not saying showing emotion means that you are not genuine. Don't get me wrong. I'm saying it can mislead. You have to know what is inside here. So my brothers and sisters, betrayal is real. None of us, none of us are immune to betrayal. If we believe that this place of affection can make up for our failure, to heed God's word, we deceive ourselves and betray Jesus in the process. While Jesus was betrayed by all these things, let's not forget the influence of Satan. Satan used Judas to betray Jesus. Satan put in Judas' heart to betray Jesus. John 13, verse 2. For this reason, Jesus referred to G J Judas as a devil. Satan influenced Judas through his love of money, through his emotionalism, through his preoccupation with self. And look, even Peter was influenced by Satan through some of these things. Matthew 16, verse 23. And so while we may decry the treachery of Judas, We should humbly learn from his mistakes. My brothers and sisters, betrayal is real. How can we safeguard ourselves? Or immune ourselves from this situation. Well, it's stated very clearly in the scripture. First Peter 5 verses 8 to 9 and it says, Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So we must be vigilant. Who resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren? That are in the world. So we cannot be complacent. We have to be on our guard. We have to have the word inside of us that help us to protect us. Less. We in turn 
not knowingly, we are betrayed, Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Mighty God, we are reminded of your word. Lord, in this world, we have to be careful. There are so many things that can distract us from you. But tonight, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will encamp round about us to guide and direct us. And Lord, we'll be embedded in your words, Lord, so that when that subtle aspect of betrayal raises its head we will know what it is about and we can resist the devil so by the God I pray for each and every one of us here those listening that Lord you'll touch their hearts in a special way that Lord they will remain steadfast upon you Lest betrayal comes their way, they will be able to resist the devil. Lord, guide and help us that your word will be in embedded within us that as, we, as soon as we see the evil show in its head, we can use your word and destroy. So, mighty God, take full control now, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, lest we forget, betrayal is real. May God Almighty help us to be faithful to him as he draws us near to the cross as a reminder of what he did for us so long ago on Calvary. May we always be faithful to his word. We close in the singing of the hymn, Jesus keep me near the cross.
forth in the love of God. Lord, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Have a good night and see you once again tomorrow evening, 6 p.m. Thank you.